chooched in there. So now we're going to test it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Whoa! You fucker! Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today, we don't get mad. We get even. So last poker night, my buddy, and the few poker nights before, I'm a terrible poker player. So he was making fun of my lack of poker skill. Well, actually, it's a disability. I, I freely admit, if I see a face card, my eyes light up like a kid at Christmas. And, you know, it's, if I'm not the first guy out, it's a win for me. But like the special snowflake that I am, I just enjoy participating. Anyway, apparently I did a bonehead move and it screwed him over, and then the rest of the night he was riding me like a rented mule. Suffice it to say, after this prank goes down, he's gonna think twice about messing with yours truly, Mr. Bumblefuck. Right, here's the background. So the guy is pretty superstitious. He's scared of ghosts and goblins and all that sort of stuff. Which I think, it's a little silly for a grown man to be, but, you know, 6,000 years of living in a tree in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Steve has taught humans anything. It's to be afraid of the dark. So, the poor bastard in question has been working on his family cottage, well, it's more of a shanty, at the lake up in buttfuck nowhere, northern British Columbia. So he's been working up there on his days off all alone. So he asked me if I had a spare he could borrow for a week or so. I said, partner, not a problem, anything for you. So this is the spare he's going to borrow. Now comes the fun part. I enlisted the aid of my friend whose buddy's buddy happens to be an RC diver that goes and gets dead bodies in the lakes around here. Some old fucker gets up to take a piss in his uh, fishing boat. He's got no flotation on because he's a tough guy and he falls out of the boat and the, the boat fucks off on him and he dies and drowns. So this buddy of a buddy has to go and get, you know, people that fly into the lake in a drunken rate, you know, all that stuff. So he goes and gets dead bodies. Nasty job, right? Well, somebody's got to do it. So my buddy is going to ask the poker playing jerk if he's seen the RCs around, if they found anything with that dead body. Further, he's going to drop the hint that they suspect foul play on account of, and keep this to yourself, all they found of him was a bloodied Star Wars t-shirt. So then the poker playing jerk is gonna go back up there all alone on his next days off to fix up the cabin. Only he's gonna be bringing this with him. Okay, use the field suture kit here to get the piezo and a little vibe motor chooched in there. So now we're gonna test it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Whoa! You fucker! Get the fuck out of there. <laughs> that did not go according to plan. So here's what let the smoke out. This little MOSFET. Now this has diode protection in it. I must have got the diode in backwards because it didn't blow right away. It took some time before it got hot enough to blow that encapsulation right to kingdom come. I'm thinking this would be a pretty good time to, what the haystack, go through the schematic with you to see how I built this and what I did wrong. Here's the circuit. I just opened up Fritzing, which is a free to download piece of software. And this is great for beginners because you have all your components here and it's very visual. You, you see the wire connections. Whereas if you just have a diagram, a schematic, a lot of times when you first start out, it's hard to determine what everything is. So I like to use this fritzing and you can also do PCB layout with it. It's not the greatest tool. There are better tools, Eagle, KiCad, all that stuff. But it's the easiest, simplest, hit the ground running type of software. And I mean, if I can figure it out, you guys can figure it out. Okay, here we have the 18 volts. And in order to get 18 volts, all we did, so you take, we put these in series, take the negative of one battery, put it to the positive of the other, and we bring the ground down here to the ground rail. This breadboard, this whole ground rail up here is gonna be at ground potential. 
and then up here we bring it into the breadboard pump it over to a fuse to protect it and over here to this positive rail on the breadboard this whole rail is going to be 18 volts and we take that 18 volts we feed it into our Arduino now in this case the Arduino is far too big to fit inside the enclosure which happens to be a drill handle so I've got these cool little things it's called the Digi Spark made by Digi Stump and these are nine dollars and it's essentially an Arduino in a square inch it's got a few less outputs and inputs however it's got a nice big beefy voltage regulator that'll take up to 35 volts so it makes it perfect to run on those 20 volt lithium ion cells and the best part is you just stick it into your confuser in the USB and you use the Arduino IDE the all the programs that work on the Arduino work on this thing it's it's awesome and because this is open source now I buy these for for nine bucks plus shipping from the guy that makes them which is no big deal to me however if you're gonna buy a whole bunch of them because it's open source you can buy these online from Chinese flea bay tangent Charlie for like two bucks a buck 85 postage included it's fucking incredible so that's what we're using instead of the Arduino so we got 18 volts going to the Arduino it regulates there's a regulator on board so it regulates that down to 5 volts and we ground out the Arduino so the Arduino is the brain box it's doing the thinking then on the analog one of the analog outputs we are sending that to the gate of a logic level MOSFET this is a relay essentially and it's a special relay in that it can switch very very quickly and it doesn't take very much power to get it to switch you could never hook up a relay directly to uh, an Arduino because the coil takes too much amperage it would fry this thing but one of these just takes a tiny tiny little bit of charge to get it to switch on and off out of the analog output we go through a current limiting resistor 220 ohms that makes sure that if something goes wrong it doesn't fry this guy that goes to the gate of the MOSFET the gate is what the switch that turns it off and on and then we bleed that voltage off through 47,000 ohms back to ground and that allows it to turn off so what we're doing is we're taking that 18 volts we're running it through this little vibe motor and then over to the drain of this MOSFET that's the actual switch so when we apply power here it closes that switch and it goes straight to ground this thing turns when we stop giving this gate power this thing opens up the motor stops turning that's all we're doing all right back from the sewing room what a piece of junk she'll make 0.5 past light speed she may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts, kid. I've made a lot of special modifications myself. I figured this out, no big mystery. I tested this on the bench at 20 volts, but the bench power supply has current limiting, so you're only ever gonna get like half an amp out of it max. Now what I did, I didn't include any current limiting resistor, just to make sure that this couldn't receive too much current. So I've got as many amps as this little battery pack would crank out, and these are mean little bastards, lithium ion. And let the smoke out instantaneously. So I, I dead bugged, that's what they call when they when there's no board or anything and you just solder the components together. It's like a dead bug with the legs sticking up. I dead bugged this and I programmed it using a little piece of code that somebody else wrote. It's quite clever, and it plays a little ditty. Okay, cross your eyes. Hopefully we don't have any explosions this time around. Wait for it. Wait for it.
right. If you didn't recognize it, that's the Imperial March from Star Wars. All right, so that's perfect. That was just the test. Now I'm gonna set it so it just comes on randomly every couple days. So if I get my timing right, this is gonna come on in the middle of the night as a stand-in for the ghost of the dork that drowned. Hey, don't ever piss off an electronics dork, cause we'll fucking get you. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep your chopsticks in the sticky rice.